In this video, I am going to introduce you to the terms future value and present value, extremely important. I am going to explain to you in a little bit as to what I mean by the one period case. Uh, let's dig right into it using an example. So let's suppose that you have a bike and you decide to sell it. And as soon as you put the ad on Craigslist, John calls, all right, so here's John. And John says, hey, uh, I am going to give you $12,000 for it today, which uh, let's suppose is your asking price as well. And so you're like, okay, okay. Uh, and uh, you say, okay, let me think about it. And as soon as you put the phone down, uh, the phone rings again. This time it's Patrick. And Patrick says, hey, saw the bike, uh, looks great. Um, I am going to give you $12,500. You're like, oh, great. You get pretty excited, except that Patrick immediately says, oh, but I don't have the money right now. I'll give it to you one year later. So one year later. Now, let's, uh, let's make this simplifying assumption that both John and Patrick are, you know, credible people. They will pay you, right? So John will give you $12,000 today. Patrick will. 100% uh, sure will give you 12,500 one year later. The question is, uh, which offer do you accept? Now, one thing that I recommend uh, to all my students is to try depicting uh, cash flows on what is referred to as a timeline. What is a timeline? A timeline is nothing but a graphical representation of cash flows that are occurring at different points in time. That's a mouthful. Let me try and explain. So a simple timeline would look something like this, where you would represent this with time. This is this is called time period zero. This is where you are today, right? So this is today. This is where you're selling your bike. And one year from now is represented by this number one. So one convenient way of thinking about uh, this timeline is that this is kind of like, um, January 1st of the year and this is uh, December 31st so between this like one year has gone by and so when John is saying look I'm gonna give you twelve thousand dollars today you can think of that twelve thousand dollars as being offered to you at this point in time in contrast if you were to draw a similar sort of a timeline uh, to reflect Patrick's offer, you would again represent today by this time period zero. Uh, and then one year from today is right over here. So this represents the end of the year, end of the first year. And Patrick's offer is basically over here, right around here, 12,500. This is where Patrick is giving you the $12,500. Okay, so this is a very sort of a basic timeline. Now the question is, which offer do you choose? If you are a um, novice and you don't understand uh, the basics of time value of money, uh, then you might say, oh, 12,500 versus 12,000. Hey, that's a $500 quote unquote profit. Let me go with that. But there's a problem with that logic because if you go with Patrick's offer of 12,500, you have to understand that this you can only see in one year's time. In contrast, John will give you $12,000 today and you could potentially use that $12,000 to do something else as well. So my point is that as you are, if you accept Patrick's offer, as you are waiting one year for this offer to come through, you have not only lost out on the $12,000 that John offered, right, because you accepted Patrick's offer, you not only lost out on the $12,000, you are also losing out on anything else that you could have done with that $12,000 during that entire year. Now, you may ask a very valid question, what else could have I done? Uh, let's put some structure on that. Uh, let's suppose that banks are paying an annual interest rate of 5%. So then you could have taken John's money, $12,000, you could have put it in the bank 
at 5%, which means that one year later, you would have had not just $12,000, you would have had an additional 5% on that. So one year later, you would have had 5% on top of the 12,000, which can be rewritten as 12,000 into 1.05 which if you do the math would come out to $12,600. So this is what we can refer to as the future value, the future value of John's $12,000 offer. And this is the future value one year from now. So I'm going to use the subscript one over here to reflect the idea. This is the future value of the $12,000 that John is offering today, one year from now. So John's offer one year from now is worth 12,600. If you want to make a good decision, you must compare this 12,600 with this 12,500 and then make a decision. You should not compare Patrick's offer of 12,500 with John's original 12,000 offer because this doesn't account for uh, the opportunity cost or what you could have done during this year, which is earn an additional 5%. So remember always, always, always uh, compare cash flows that are occurring at the same point in time. Patrick's 12,500 is more comparable to the 12,600 that is effectively what John is offering you. I know that he he's not putting it in so many words. He's just saying, oh, I'll give you $12,000 today. But you know that if you got that, then one year later, you would have 12,600 yourself. So effectively, John is offering you 12,600 one year later. Patrick is offering 12,500 uh, one year later. It takes no rocket scientist to understand that John's offer is superior. So here the future value of $12,000 is $12,600. Now, uh, more generally, we can write that the future value uh, in one year from now, and this is what the one period case is indicating. We're just going one year out into the future, so that's what this is about. So future value of any amount that you have in the present, $12,000 is what you were getting in the present, so today. So future value of any amount that you're getting in the present, call that present value, is you just you take that present value and multiply it by one plus R, where R is the interest rate. Uh, in some textbooks, uh, the terminology is a little bit different. Instead of R, you will see the small i. I stands for interest, R stands for rate. So it's just a difference of terminology, but the main idea is the same. Uh, there's one additional way in which you could have analyzed the same uh, analyzed the same um, sort of propositions by the two individuals. Right now, what did we do? We said, you know what? It doesn't make sense to compare Patrick's 12,500 directly with John's 12,000 because they're occurring at different points in time. This is one year later. This is today. So what did you do? You took this 12,000 and you said what it would be, what, it, what would it be worth in the future? So one year from now, and then you compared the two numbers, right? we can go in the opposite direction as well. What I mean by that is, let's see what Patrick is effectively offering us today, right? So if 12,500 is what Patrick is offering one year from now, let's try and understand what effectively is it that he's offering to us today, and then we can compare that number with what John is offering today, and then whichever is more, we'll go with that. Sounds reasonable. How do we do that? Well, take a look at this equation. In terms of this equation, what we're really saying is that um, we know how much is being offered in the future. So how much is being offered one year into the future? Uh, Patrick is basically offering 12,500. 
we are trying to determine the present value of that. How much is that offer worth in the present? And the interest rate is given as 5%. So if we work in the opposite direction, we can rewrite this formula as present value equals take the future value one year from now and you divide it by one plus R or one plus the interest rate. In this case, Patrick's offer of uh, 12,500 into the future. So that's that. You take that and you divide it by 1.05, which if you will do the math, will give you 11,904.76. 11,904.76. So effectively, Patrick is offering you 11,904.76 today. Why? How do you figure that? Because if you had this money today, you could put it in the bank at 5%, have 5% on top of that, which by definition would give you 12,500 one year from now, right? So Patrick offering you 12,500 one year from now is as if he's offering you 11,904 today. So now which offer is superior? Is John's offer of 12,000 today superior? Or is Patrick's effective offer of 11,904 today superior? Again, you come to the same conclusion John is making a superior offer, so go with John. And so this is the idea behind these concepts of future value and present value. The reason why these concepts are important, this is the key, they help us compare cash flows that are at different points in time by either allowing us to take some number that we have today and taking them out in the future that's what future value did or we take some future numbers and bring them back in the present this is what we did here ultimately we always want to compare cash flows that are occurring at the same point in time to make a decision we decided to go with john's offer because in present value terms, 12,000 is more than 11,904. We went with John's offer because 12,600 that John is offering one year in the future is more than what Patrick is offering one year in the future, which is 12,500. And so this is why the concepts of future value and present value so important because they allow us to compare cash flows at different points in time. So as we will move along, we will make this a little bit more complex rather than just going one year out into the future. Uh, we will have two time periods, three, you know, sometimes infinity. And uh, we'll have more complex cash flows coming in in which you'll have some money coming in in year one, year two, year three. But this core idea will remain the same. And so if you understand this, then you'll be golden. All right, see you next time.